a double row stitch down boot that's durable, comfortable, and costs well under $200? This is the Jim Green African Ranger. Welcome, I'm Carl Morawski, and this is the channel that helps you own less and own better, and it kind of looks like I'm wearing underwear from the 1700s. It's not though, I swear, this is a uh, Henley. You know, I am proud to have been the first person on YouTube to cover Jim Green. But to be fair, it wasn't because I discovered them. I learned about them from a friendly commenter who said, hey, you gotta check out Jim Green. They're almost kind of like the Red Wing version in South Africa. If you go in the comment section of almost any of my videos, you'll find a plethora of information down there. So many people are so smart and willing to share their knowledge and experience that oftentimes that's where the real value of these videos is. So go ahead down there and, and look in the comment section of almost any video. People will call me out if I'm mistaken or maybe overlooked something. Not one of us is smarter than all of us and it's a great resource. Well, Jim Green has been promoting their African Ranger quite a bit lately and I was lucky enough to snag a pair in the Crazy Horse Leather. So let's jump right into the construction. These boots are made from two to 2.2 millimeter, which is actually five to five and a half ounce leather, which is double layered in the toe, heel, and eyelet areas for durability. Jim Green recently changed tanneries and is using a South African tannery in the Cape region using locally sourced hides. They feature double row stitch down construction and Jim Green does their double rows very tightly together in anticipation of future resoles. They have a steel shank for support, heavy duty hooks and eyelets, soft, fully gusseted leather tongue and padded collar for comfort. And most importantly, a soft wedge sole, which is quite low profile compared to the typical Christie wedge. It's important to know why these boots were created as I think it really frames in why they're special and clearly states their value proposition. So from the Jim Green website, 50% of Rangers don't have access to sufficient boots and gear and over 40% are required to purchase their own boots. With the future of our wilderness areas in the hands of those with boots on the ground, Jim Green Footwear and the Game Rangers Association of Africa have come together to make sure this issue is addressed. Inadequate gear for Rangers leads to a low morale and affects Rangers' well-being. With Rangers being on the front line of our conservation areas, a quality pair of boots is essential for everyday tasks. We put out a survey to Rangers from across Africa and from that, pulled together various focus points as to what is needed in the ultimate all-round Ranger boot. From that, we give to you the African Ranger, a boot designed by Rangers for Rangers. The boot is designed with three main focus areas, comfort and durability, while at an affordable price. So these really aren't work boots like the Razorback, and they're not truly hiking boots like the Jim Green Monster. They're somewhere in between. And to be completely honest, as an American from the suburbs, I'm not entirely sure what goes into being an African Ranger. All I know is it sounds cool as hell. Chances are that you'll be wearing these in your own concrete jungle or small town or whatever. So how does the African Ranger fare in other conditions? Well, we should judge this boot based on its claims of being comfortable, durable, and affordable. There's no doubt that these are comfortable boots. Like my Razorbacks, the toe box is low and wide. For my Hobbit-like feet, this is wonderfully comfortable, but your mileage may vary depending on your foot shape. The soft wedge sole is a real home run, and I found it to be not only comfortable, but actually quite grippy on most surfaces. It's contoured and low profile, so even though their aim wasn't aesthetic, it sure looks great and it flexes very easily. I think this is the real secret ingredient in these boots. The rubber compound is soft, but not too soft, and it's actually made by Jim Green in South Africa, not Vibram or an external company. The padded collar is standard fare for hiking boots, and it makes walking all day in these things a breeze. No issues with break-in at all. They're ready to go right out of the box. Now these two components make the boots feel more like a sneaker than a boot at all. The one place that Jim Green has strategically cut costs is the insole. Now to be fair, they have improved it quite a bit compared to the original fiberboard version, and you could definitely run these as is, but next to laces, the insole is probably the easiest thing to change out on a pair of boots and slipping in a pair of super feet insoles or something like that will make a huge difference. This is also where you can kind of address some of your own needs. So if you need more arch support or heel cushioning, you can do that with specific insoles. If they had to cut a corner to keep the price low, I think this was a smart place to do it. 
Durability. Now, double row stitch down construction is what you get on the toughest of tough work boots from the likes of Whites and Viberg and Nix and Drews and Franks and all those companies. The African Rangers feature a 360 degree stitch down construction since there's not a nailed on heel. Moreover, the insole is secured to the upper with a double stitch 2.2 millimeter braided nylon cord and the toe, the heel, and the eyelet areas use two layers of leather. Without doing long-term testing on these boots, though I will continue to wear them, it looks like durability is not going to be an issue. And if history is any indication with my Razorbacks, Jim Green boots take a beating and they just keep asking for more. They're tough little buggers. The Jim Green African Rangers cost $169 with a $10 premium for the crazy horse leather that you see here. That is a price well below that of comparable boots. It's actually kind of difficult to find boots which compare directly with these. The Clark's Desert boot for $150 comes to mind, but it's more of a casual stylish boot than the African Ranger. The Red Wing Work Chukka is $100 more than the African Ranger at $279. The Rhodes Tracker is a great boot for $198, and that's getting a little bit closer, but I think it's more focused on style than anything. You could consider hikers from Danner or Solomon as potential options, but those are not really resolable and oftentimes more expensive, so yes, Jim Green nailed the affordability. Jim Green also donates a pair of their African Ranger boots to a Ranger for every 10 boots sold. It's clear that this is a cause that they care very much about, and overall I think Jim Green met each one of their claims very handily. This is a boot which truly embodies the function before form attitude, and they're not the prettiest boot out there. In fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these might be the ugliest boots that I own. They're made in a way that a tool of the trade usually is, with a focus on durability and functionality rather than aesthetics. The leather is decent, but clearly work boot grade. It's stamped and sewn together the way most factory boots are, without edge treatment or high stitches per inch. It looks like it was pieced together in sections, and that eyelet segment is quite the eyesore. But these characteristics are kind of what make the African Ranger what it is. This is the AMC Eagle. It's a four-wheel drive station wagon which was sold from 1980 to 1987, powered by a 2.5-liter four-cylinder or a 4.2-liter six-cylinder. They were the only four-wheel drive passenger cars produced in the U.S. in their time, so you could pretty much go anywhere in relative comfort in a car that got decent gas mileage. They promised passenger car comfort, four-wheel drive capabilities, and affordability compared to their SUV and pickup truck counterparts. Sound familiar? The Eagle definitely won't win any beauty pageants, but they offered a list of features which was hard to find back in the day, and their utilitarian looks is all part of their funky charm. The same can be said for the African Ranger. For a reasonable price, you can go almost anywhere, on or off-road, in relative comfort. And because of those traits, to me, their looks are an endearing reminder that function follows form with these boots. Instagram snobs be damned. Now, I really think that these boots will find homes that where people are gonna love them outside of the African Ranger community. If you're somebody who just needs some comfortable, durable, affordable boots, and you kind of live an active lifestyle, or even if you just want something to use out in the yard or go for the occasional walk, something that's gonna be an alternative to your sneaker. Maybe this is the first boot that you own, or you never really needed any, but now you're looking at these. I think they're just a fantastic option. Plus, you could feel good about the fact that they are donating one to, you know, an African Ranger for every 10 that are sold. That's, that's pretty damn cool. They're not gonna stand in for your Pacific Northwest high octane work boots the same way that an AMC Eagle won't stand in for a full-size pickup truck. That's really not what they're intended to do. But in their all-around intended purpose, I think that they would find homes on the streets of New York City, in the bush of the African wilderness, or here in the suburbs of Connecticut. They're really great boots. So anyway, go and snag yourself a pair. I've left a link in the description below. You can go and get some and, and enjoy. And if you'd like to see more videos on boots like this, I've made you a whole playlist right there. In that playlist, you could find stuff that I've covered from Jim Green before. Uh, some work boots, some casual boots. I kind of put together a bit of a mix for you if you sort of want to go around and see what your options are. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you next time.